Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Simon Brown here doing today's presentation. This afternoon's presentation, really going to be focusing on selecting a stockbroker. Typically, people go to their bank uh, who has a stockbroker um, and they sign up with that stockbroker. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, certainly, most of the big banks have got stockbrokers. Certainly, they very good stockbrokers. Really what we want to delve into, there are literally hundreds of brokers in South Africa. This webinar wants to help you understand what you may need, what you're looking for, um, and give you an idea of, of what's out there and what's important. I'm not going to recommend brokers in a sense, although we can talk about some options in the Q&A at the end, but you know, maybe you're not even thinking about certain things and I can put some ideas in your head uh, that's broadly what we're looking for for today. To start wide, Firstly, you get the full service stockbroker. That's your traditional uh, offer advice, portfolio management. You'll call them up, you'll have a chat. They'll typically charge you a higher fee. They need to, they need to cover their costs. It's a much more expensive operation to run. Um, and they will be the person, as I said, who you can phone up and, and say, I'm thinking of buying MTN. And they will say, we've got a recommendation to buy it or to sell it, whatever the case may be. Um, and of course, that advice may be good or not. You need to dig around into that sense, obviously. The second point is the do-it-yourself, the DIY broker, which is typically the cheaper broker and also an online stock broker. In this day and age, DIY is, is the, the online is, is not as, uh, 10 years ago it was very rudimentary. These days they really offer very, very good service. Um, and if you're confident enough to do it yourself, certainly worth a shot. And in fact, some of the full service will offer DIY as part of their process at the same time. Just a quick point about the risks to make sure you're protected. They need to be JC registered. You need to go to the JC website. Um, and that's because the JC has a guaranteed fund. So if anything untoward happens with your broker or your stockbroker account, the JC will step in. And also if they are offering if they're offering advice, they need to be FSB accredited. You go to the FSB website and check that they have accreditation in that space there. And then if you're trading over-the-counter products, OTC products, in other words, products that are not traded on the JSC or one of their subsidiaries, such as the Bond Exchange or SAFIX, the South African Futures Exchange, you're then taking something called counterparty risk and make sure that you trust your counterparty. And that's easy to say, <laughs> significantly harder to do. The easiest way to trust them is, now, are they absolutely massive, I suppose. So what is important? A giant list, a, a, a truly, truly giant list. And in fact, in many senses, when I put it together, an intimidating list initially. It, it just, there's so much information there. And the first thought was, wow, this is harder than one thought. Yes, no, maybe. We'll, we'll run through each of those particular points. And then at the end, we'll come to highlight some of the more important ones to help you get an understanding, as I said, of what really is important. Um, price. Firstly, uh, taxes are going to make up about uh, half a percent on a 10,000 rand trade. That's secondary tax on companies, that's VAT, that's investor protection levy, and that is straight fees. On a 10,000 rand trade, they cut, that comes to about 46 rand, so about a half a percent. Um, obviously, every broker has to charge those fees. Those are not negotiable. Uh, what you can look around for monthly fees. Many brokers will start charge a monthly admin fee. In fact, most of them do. They may have it as a monthly fee, 50, 100 rand a month. They may have it as a quarterly fee. They may not charge the fee if you do a certain number of transactions. And some may do a fee as a percentage of your overall portfolio value. So the monthly fee is worth looking at. If you've only got a 1,000 rand portfolio and your monthly fee works out at 600 rand a year, you're spending 6% of your money on that fee and you're not going anywhere. Then you know, is the other bells and whistles you're getting really adding up to the equation, I suppose, is then the question. Brokerage, that's the fee you're going to charge to do a transaction. And there are really three components to it, sliding, minimum, and percentage-based. So some brokers will say the fee is 0.4% or 120 Rand, whichever is greater. So if you did a 10,000 Rand trade, the 0.4 would be 40 Rand, but you'd pay the minimum at 120. Others will have 50 Rand or 0.5. Some will charge you 1% on amounts less than 10,000 Rand. The point here is to get a, an understanding of what sort of size of transactions you're expecting to be doing um, and work back from that. Costs are important. They're critically important. I would say this is one of 
the more important, but I'm not going to say it's the only thing that absolutely counts. And as I said, it's that trade size which is very important. Now, if you're doing uh, 10,000 Rand trades, a 0 0.5 and 50 Rand is a better deal than a 0 0.4 and 120 because your cost there is going to be the 50 Rand, whereas at the 0 0.4, 120, you would pay 120 Rand. And that 70 Rand is, 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 as I said, not insignificant. It might seem small, but at the end of the day, it all starts to add up over time. So price is important. Check what their monthly fee is. Check what their brokerage is. See where you're going to fit in in that process. Products. In other words, what are you looking to trade? What are you looking to invest? What is it that, you, that you're hoping to do? Shares, derivatives, maybe even wanting to go offshore. The issue here is that ideally you want to be able to do everything in one place. You don't want to do your share trades at one broker and then have to go to another broker to do your derivative trades and then a third broker to do offshore. Now, offshore is markedly more complicated. Not many brokers, particularly in the online space, offer offshore. But certainly, and get an idea, and you might not immediately be attracted to certain products, but maybe you're thinking you want to trade warrants, make sure it's offered. You want to trade single stock futures, do they have those? Are they available? So you can do all your transactions in one place rather than having to move between brokerage accounts. And the big issue there is obviously is moving money around as well, and there's delays in that process of moving the cash and the like. So what products are they offering? What information do they have in terms of both fundamental information? That could be company fundamental information, price earnings, uh, dividend yields, etc., and also price information. Most of the online brokers are going to offer fundamental data back to 1991 and price data back to 1994. And they're going to source it from the same place. It's the same data in essence. So there's probably not going to be a huge difference there. But if that sort of data is important to you and if you see that they've got it, see what options they have, make sure it's not something that's missing. Platform, not particularly with the DIY environment. Uh, website, is it web access? Do they uh, have perhaps mobile access at the same time? Um, telephone support, can you place trades? There might be an online broker, but many of them will offer the ability to place a trade. Sometimes you simply can't get onto the internet. And then the new big thing now is tablets. Most work on tablet. Mobile is a little more complicated. Some work on mobile. The, the dream of sitting on a beach and trading from a mobile phone, I think, is a myth more than anything else. If you're on the beach, enjoy the beach. Uh, ignore the trading. And certainly you can have alerts and, and, and go through call centers and the like. But check the platforms. Uh, as I said, they all have websites. Most of them have telephone. Many work on the tablet environment. Mobile at this day and age is not very popular yet. Support is important. Their call center, do they have a call center? What are the hours of operation? What can that call center help you with? I mean, can they give you IT help? If, if you can't log on, or are they going to say it's an IT problem? And understand the IT help would be rudimentary, I accept. But certainly, the call center is important. And can they take trades? In other words, can they buy and sell positions for you if you can't get online? There might be a premium. They might charge you a little bit more, but that's important tools that they offer, and here's really where we're starting to get into nuts and bolts. Price right up front, then we start getting to tools. Do they have online charts? Are they live? In other words, intraday, or are they end-of-day charts? Uh, do they have search function? In other words, so that you say, well, I want to find all the stocks that have got a PE below 5. Are you able to search for that? Um, do they enable watch lists? I mean, you can set up a selection of shares and, and, and monitor them. You can set a certain start price, perhaps, maybe even multiple watch lists. And then do they have alerts? Will they send you information at predetermined levels, in other words, prices or information or times of the day? And our alerts is a point on its own, so I'll park that there for now. Now, in the online environment, they're all offering some level of bells and whistles. A lot of it we might not be interested in. It's a case of... You're not interested in intraday charts during the day, the live charts, then don't worry about that. Um, maybe you're not interested in charts at all. Then their bells and whistles in that space simply wouldn't interest you. Research, another very, very important uh, aspect, I think, particularly for the beginner investor. number of issues there, the quality of the research. And that's difficult to gauge 
Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to, for a researcher to put their head in a block, um, but I think go off some for a couple of backdated reports, uh, see the, 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 the depth of the research. They might not have been right. They're not always going to be right, but certainly have a look at that quality and the range. Are they just doing research on maybe the top 40 companies? Are they offering research on small stocks? Um, are they doing company and economic research? So it's more than just a company. It's also looking at data as it comes out. And is that local and international data? So there's a whole range. Research suddenly can broaden out significantly into what's available out there. And then consensus data, where different companies, Profile Media or INET Bridge, go out and, and poll the different analysts and get their views and get an average and disseminate that via stockbrokers. Is that available? Now, some of this information we're going to find on the World Wide Web on its own. We don't have to have a brokerage account. We can literally go and find them in consensus data. If I recall correctly, MoneyWeb has it. Um, so you might not find it at your stockbroker. You might find it at a third place. And then perhaps the most important area after, after price and, and, and tools, and, and maybe even more important than tools, maybe even more important than price, is, ed is education. And then that's going to depend very much where you are in that learning curve. If, if you're completely au okay fait with the market, well, then perhaps education isn't so important to you. But it's the, the different types. Do they have online courses, uh, flash presentations, webinars such as this one? Do they have face-to-face -face where you can physically go to a venue, listen to a presenter for an hour or five or half a Saturday or something, ask questions and engage? Uh, the quality is obviously important. And the different levels. Is it just sort of you know, investing 101? Do they take it through to more advanced products, more advanced strategies? How often do they have them? If it's just once a year and it's held in Mossel Bay, that's great if you're in Mossel Bay that weekend, but do they have them where you are, what sort of frequency, and how often are they updated? Now, uh, to blow our own whistle, yeah, you could take the view that, well, that's well and good, but we can go to just one lap, fair shot, and that's certainly what we're trying to do in this space here, but certainly a lot of the brokers are offering uh, education, some better than others, have a look at what's out there and avail yourself. News, uh, your Sense News, Stock Exchange News Service. Now, every broker is going to give you this. And in fact, you can go to MoneyWeb, you can go to Fin24, you can go to ShareNet, and you will find that Sense News. So that's fairly simple to find. Um, market news, in other words, market updates, perhaps, what's happening. Also, maybe what's coming up. What companies have got results coming out? Uh, what dividend, what stocks are going ex-dividend? What dividends and results have been announced? And the like. Breaking news. Uh, local and international, are they pulling uh, information in? Again, you can set up a Google Reader, you could go to Bloomberg, you can go to Reuters, but maybe your broker's got a nice product in that space there or a nice way of putting it together. makes your life easier. If we can do stuff in one website rather than having to go to a dozen websites, always a lot better. Prices. Here I'm not talking the price to trade, I'm talking the prices of the stock market that you want to see, the share prices. Do they offer live and delayed? Again, delayed, they're almost certainly going to offer 15-minute um, delayed. And in 99% of cases, that's fine. Again, you can often find those delayed prices at third-party websites, the MoneyWebs, the ShareNet, the Fin24s and the like. Um, do you need live prices? What's the charge going to be? Typically, it's relatively cheap. Um, but have a look at their structure. Some of them, in essence, you don't pay for it unless you consume a very large amount. If you're going to be wanting streaming prices rather than HTML based, are they offering that? What about prices of things other than shares, commodities, international indices, currencies and the like? Do they offer those? Do they offer watch lists? Will they send you the prices via SMS and email? My stockbroker sends me an update of prices every hour by SMS. Now I've selected a couple of key indices, the gold price and the Rand dollar exchange rate. It's every hour at a quarter past from 10 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the evening, I get an SMS. And then in the evening, I get an email of my entire watch list being sent to me. Alerts kind of plays back into the price alerts, but there's two parts to it. One is uh, being sent to prices at certain time frames. So at uh, 10 o'clock or whatever time that you've decided, you will receive a price alert saying that this stock is trading at that price. The flip side of that is saying, if this stock goes to, if MTN trades at 150 Rand, send me an SMS or an email. 
And so can you set up that type of price alert? And that alert will sit and wait and wait and wait until such time as it actually comes through. So both time-based and price-sensitive alerts. Sense alerts, in other words, if a company issues a sense, will they send you an SMS or an email detailing the sense? News alerts, and I've struggled to find anything good in this space, but where breaking news, and in truth I use the uh, Radio 702 Eyewitness News, if you go to ewn.coza, I use their breaking news. It's not really market orientated, but it kind of fills the, the job to a degree. And then of course, how are they delivering it to you? SMS and email, um, which are they doing? Email, probably free, SMS probably attracts a fee. Stop losses. This is more for the trader uh, who wants to be able to take a stop loss position. Are you, an, are you able to put stop losses on your positions? Are they automatic? Do they offer you trailing and or fixed stop losses? And how do those systems work? Again, many of the online brokers will offer a type of stop loss. So you say, I've bought MTN. If it falls to 132 Rand, please sell it. And that will stop loss will sit in the broker's system waiting until that price is reached. When it does, it will exit your position. A fixed one will be where you say 132 Rand. Trading would be when you say, as the stock moves, keep my stop loss maybe 10% below that level. Are they offering advice? The online brokers typically are not offering advice. Some of them may. Um, it's typically only your full service. They will give you advice of what to buy and sell. They will uh, perhaps give you a managed portfolio where you literally just give them money and they will ensure that, that, that they trade it as they deem best. Make sure you have a, a well understood mandate and that you've agreed what you're trying to achieve and the like. Um, but also remember that their research will offer ideas and maybe they even put together gummy portfolios and the like. So portfolios you can mimic. A number of brokers, both full service and online, offer that. So it depends how much advice you want and advice ties into research and in truth, advice ties into education at the same time. So the short version, because um, as I said, that's a hugely long list. I, to my mind, in order of importance, is what are the things that we're looking for from a stockbroker? Is price, what are they charging us to transact? And then it all flipped out. Let me do it that way. Education, information, research, and product. So what are they charging you to transact? Monthly or annual fees? What is the education offering? What information have they got? How good is it? How deep is it? How uh, far back does it go? What research are they offering? And what sort of research? And if they give you a one-liner, buy this, not so good. You want a couple of pages. You want to understand why they're recommending it, what their target prices are. And then the products. Maybe it's moot. Maybe you only want to trade shares. But if you're interested in other products and maybe trading derivatives uh, and the like, do they offer those products at the same time? How do you find them? Head, head along to the, the JC website, jc.co.za. Under how to invest, locate a JC member, JC equity members. You will find a list of all of the available brokers that are online as well as the commodity derivatives and equity derivatives um, and you can find that list there. It's a bit daunting. Typically I say to folks, start with your bank, see what they offer um, and then have a look around and, and start doing some digging. You're welcome to drop me an email. I'll send some, some, some of the, the better known larger brokers in South Africa. As I said, we can discuss that in Q&A at the same time. Um, there's a lot out there. A lot of them are going to be the, the traditional broker more than that uh, online broker, the do-it-yourself broker. Quick recap. I suppose it's important to, to first have stand back and say, what is it that you're looking for? What is it you're trying to achieve with your, your, your investing? Where are you? What sort of knowledge levels are you at? How much money are you looking to invest? So working out what you want, you can then start doing your research. There's a lot to consider. Don't overcomplicate it. Uh, and and I mean, you don't need to draw up massive spreadsheets and the like. It's a you know, general sense of, you know, these are the things that are important to me. Um, hopefully this webinar has given you an idea of, of what are the things which are available and should be looked at. Some you can discard. Some when you're looking at the, at the lists that the brokers are offering, you can say, ah, yeah, I remember that. That to me is important and something I'd be interested in looking at. Yeah, um, some online sh uh, brokers, they don't offer... Um, you know, like the OTC, 
We didn't know the reason why they didn't offer the OTC relatively to full brokers when they offer the, the OTC? Good question. Asking about um, OTC in which some brokers don't offer the over-the-counter over the over the products, typically that would be CFDs. There are a couple of reasons. Primarily is that because it's an over-the-counter product, they actually have to manage it. Whereas if you're trading the exchange traded, such as a single stock future, they really, it's not a problem. They can go along and, and do the trade through the market. As soon as it's an OTC, they have to go and provision the hedge. They've got to have large trading books. They've got to have uh, traders, etc. So it's really a case of, of resources and size of balance sheets and cash available. So a lot of the smaller guys are not offering the OTC product, um, whereas some of the bigger ones certainly are. Thanks very much for your time. I hope the webinar was uh, great. I hope it, you, you can use it for selecting brokers. Maybe even go back and see what your broker is offering and, and maybe uh, give them some pointers as what you think should be available. Thanks for your time today.